From their humble beginnings to the true worth of their empire, stay tuned to number one to find out the history of Babylon. Number 10. The Amorites in Babylon While it's always important to note the empire itself, it's also important to note how the empire came to be in the first place. And for the ancient Babylonian Empire, its roots start in another empire, Mesopotamia. Mesopotamia is considered one of the origin points of the world, so it shouldn't be too much of a surprise that a lot of the future of the world came from the area. From 2900 to 2000 BC, the nation had two different factions under it, and then it unified. Later on, they would become a Sumerian Empire of sorts, and that lasted for about a century. Then around 2000 BC, the group known as the Amorites came to be, and with that came a migration towards the southern parts of Mesopotamia. They adopted various cultures into their own and actually went and got more city-states to join them through various means. The Amorites became so powerful that they eventually took down the Neo-Sumerian Empire. After the victory, they freed a part of the land owned by the Sumerians, and in that land was Babylon. Through this, the first Babylonian dynasty was established, even if it wasn't exactly called that at the time of its birth. Number 9. Hammurabi Brought Fame to the Dynasty Alright, so now the dynasty of Babylonia has been established, but what did they do with it? Well, that is the question, isn't it? The land had many rulers for some time, but what these Amorite rulers did is a bit of a mystery. History doesn't tell us much about them, believe it or not. Of the first five leaders, only some of them are credited with various things like gaining victory in battle and stuff like that. One was instrumental though, in making Babylon a bit stronger in regards to its defenses, but that's about it. It was the sixth ruler of the nation that would help propel things forward in a big way, and his name was Hammurabi. Hammurabi was the one who took Babylon from a simple city to a grand spectacle of one. He then used his resources to expand the empires in every single direction. By the time he was done, the empire had grown greatly, and much of Mesopotamia and nearby regions were under his control. But more than that, Hammurabi was a very good leader. He believed in laws and things that would benefit everyone while also helping the government, such as taxation and being a bureaucracy. He was the first to establish a complete set of laws for his nation, which he used to rule very efficiently. Most empires like this don't have the best of leaders, but the ancient Babylonian Empire was definitely an exception. Number 8. The Hanging Gardens of Babylon Before we talk about this amazing garden, take a moment to like this video and join the Zero to Hero community by using the buttons below. There's no doubt that you've heard of the Hanging Gardens of Babylon at one point in time or another. After all, it's been called one of the seven ancient wonders of the world and was said to be a place of incredible beauty, but despite that, it's never been found. Ever. So how come it's such a noted piece of history? Well, this all started with a document written by Barossus of Babylon, who noted that in the time of 600 BC, King Nebuchadnezzar II had the hanging gardens built in honor of his wife, Amittis. To be clear, the gardens didn't hang in the air or anything like that, it was more of a draping effect, but still it was said to be rather beautiful. And yet we don't know where they are or even where exactly they were. It's a true mystery of history. Furthermore, outside of Barossus, the only other documented mention of the hanging gardens of Babylon was by a Greek historian named Diodorus Siculus. There's no other mention of it anywhere. So if we were to take all of these records as truth, where in the heck did those hanging gardens go? Well, some people believe that an earthquake destroyed the gardens sometime in the second century, when a documented case of one was said to have happened. Another possibility is that the sands of the area eventually consumed the gardens, which has also been documented to have happened many times within history. Many people have tried to find the hanging gardens of Babylon if for no other reason than to bear witness to their historical importance. But will they ever be found? That's something no one can answer just yet. Number 7. Ishtar Gate On the flip side, an archaeological wonder of the world that has indeed been discovered belonging to the Babylonian Empire is that of the Ishtar Gate. This particular gate was the entrance to the city of Babylon. 
Not unlike the city itself, the Ishtar Gate was dressed to impress. It was adorned with various things including bright blue bricks and pictures painted all over it, such as dragons, lions, and bulls. When it was fully up, it must have been a true wonder. Now once you went through the gate and into the city, you were met with the processional way, a half mile of corridor dedicated to their religion. This was a major landmark of Babylon and was to be treated with respect. Though the gate was lost, it was later recovered by German archaeologists who went on to reconstruct it in a museum in Britain using the original bricks, which is pretty impressive when you think about it. You can see it now if you want, you just need to go to the Pergamon Museum. Number 6. The First Empire Ended in 1595 BC Not so ironically, many legendary nations have fallen after specific leaders in their history passed on. The First Babylonian Empire was just so. For after Hammurabi passed away, the nation couldn't hold itself together very well. Hammurabi wasn't just their leader, he was their symbol of excellence and law. Eventually, they started to lose all of the land that Hammurabi had won for them during his reign. The walls slowly closed in until they were basically back to square one, the only exception being Babylon itself, which was a major fixture in the area and wasn't going anywhere just yet. But the final blow to the First Empire came at the hands of the Hittites in 1595 BC. The Hittites were a group from a nearby city and they amassed an army that would put the final nail in the coffin of the First Empire of Babylonia. They even went so far as to ransack Babylon itself and get all of its treasures. The city was ransacked and razed and left prone to invasion. It wouldn't be the end of them per se, but it was the end of what they had originally started. Number 5. Babylonian Women If there's one thing that the ancient world most definitely got wrong, it was how they treated the women of their culture. Most ancient cultures viewed women as second in just about everything, and thus they weren't given many rights, privileges, or allowed to do many of the things that men could do. And sadly, this continued for many millennia until we became hopefully more enlightened. Or at least partially enlightened, but that's another topic. One of the few exceptions, though, was the ancient Babylonian Empire. Not only did they respect their women, they gave them all sorts of rights and privileges that would definitely tick off other nations. For example, women could be priests, which was a great honor. They could also hold certain businesses under their own name, such as selling wine. In terms of family and marriage, a woman could have her husband support her throughout their marriage, and should the husband pass away, the wife would keep her husband's lands, something that many cultures refused to do despite the bonds of marriage. It almost makes you wonder what other cultures would have been like if they had done some similar things. Number 4. The Walls of Babylon There is a reason that Babylon stood for so long, and that reason was because once it became a great city, its rulers made sure it was fortified. Hammurabi, for example, put giant walls around the city to help protect it from invaders. Then, during the time of King Nebuchadnezzar II, he made the walls even more fortified. He did this by creating three rings of walls around the city, each of which were 40 feet tall, something no army at the time could penetrate without great effort. It was said that the walls were so massive that you could hold chariot races on top of them, and they apparently did just that. And at this point in time, Babylon was about the size of the city of Chicago. So yeah, having multiple layers of walls protecting it, it's pretty impressive. Number 3. Jewelry If you're wearing a necklace, a ring, or any other kind of precious jewelry, you have the Babylonian people to thank for that. They were the ones who came up with the idea, not just for jewelry, but to use rare stones to make them more valuable. The makers would also use metals to make them stronger, just like the jewelry makers of today. And to that end, they were very high quality in their wares, which made Babylon an even better city to be in during their heyday. Number 2. How was the city named Babylon? No one knows. No, seriously, the origin of the name Babylon, and thus the name Babylonia, is a bit of a mystery among scholars. We call it Babylon right now because of its arrival from the great language. They got it from the word Babylon, or so the legend goes, but how either of them came up with that name is uncertain. A translation for Babylon is Gate of God, which would appear in the Christian Bible via the word Babel, as in the Tower of Babel, which would lead to the translation of its meaning being confusion, after the legendary story of the tower. But whether any of this is accurate or not is up for some serious debate. Number 1. 
the Neo-Babylonian Empire After the passing of Hammurabi and the invasion of the Hittites, the Babylonian people fell into turmoil. Then in 626 BC, the Neo-Babylonian Empire rose back up, and with it came a time of great expansion and learning as the people rallied to be the best form of themselves, and in many ways, they succeeded. The Neo-Babylonian Empire is considered the greatest point in Babylonian history by some, even more than Hammurabi's reign. They focused on being better economically, agriculturally, expanded arts, science, and more. Eventually though, it was conquered by Persia, and then taken over by Alexander the Great in 331 BC. What do you know about the history of Babylon? Let us know in the comments below and take care!